God is good and he's worthy of all the praise and the honor. God is good all the time and all the time our God is good. Well, today the subject will be entitled, Pull It Down. Pull It Down. Well, the word pull down is defined as the following. A stronghold is a faulty thinking pattern based on lies and deception. Deception is one of the primary weapons of the devil because it is the building block for a stronghold. Pull it down. What strongholds can do is cause us to think in a way which blocks us from receiving God's best. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 says, For the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Pull it down. 2 Corinthians 10, 5 say, Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought unto captivity to the obedience of Christ. Well, we walk in the flesh. We do not war after the flesh. We walk in the flesh, but we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. So we walk in the flesh. That is, we are in the body of flesh. However, our real warfare are not fleshly warfares. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Paul writing to the Ephesians says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual entities in high places. Well, Ephesians 6 and 12 says, For our real battle, our real warfare, our real warfare are not physical battles. Are you listening to me? They are spiritual battles with spiritual entities that surround us. And there's a spiritual warfare constantly, continuously going on. See, we do not and cannot imagine the extent to which spiritual warfare is being raged all around us. Well, when Daniel set his heart to seek the Lord through fasting and praying. And after the Bible said, the Bible said that after 21 days, the angel came to Daniel and said, From the day you first called unto the Lord, he said, I was dispatched to bring you the answer. But lo, the prince of Persia, capture me and held me until Finally, Michael, the warring angel, the great prince, came and set me free. And now I am come to reveal unto you those things that you desire to know of God. You see, we are really aware. We are not really aware of the spiritual warfare that goes on in the world around us. See, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy from us. The enemy comes to block us, but we got to pull it down, pull down every stronghold that stops us from reaching God. Well, there's a tremendous battle over the soul of man being waged by the Spirit of God and by Satan. You see, God's Spirit is tugging. Satan is trying to hold on. Tremendous spiritual warfare 
battle. And to be aware of them is vital for us as Christians if we're going to maintain a life of victory. I would just like to say one of our problems is we do not always. Saints, we don't recognize when Satan is attacking us. And we are not aware of the fight that we are under spiritual attack. And because we are not aware of the fight that is a spiritual attack against us, we just go on rather than standing against it and resisting it. For the Bible let us know that if we resist the devil, the Bible said he will flee from us. But I first got to recognize, identify that Satan attack before I can resist him. You see, first you got to recognize and identify that it is Satan that orchestrating the thing that's going against you or happening in your life. You see, you see, I just want to know that, that we got to recognize the source of the type. See, this is the enemy at work. We got the knowledge it's the enemy at work. He's attacking me. Having recognized it, then I can learn how to do what? I can learn how to deal with it. And then in resisting, the Bible said resist the devil and he'll do what? He'll flee from us. And then after recognizing and resisting, then we rejoice in the victory of the Lord over the power and the forces of the darkness. And as you rejoice, you will find your depression leaving. You will find the irritation leaving, and you will find free victory in God. See, I want to let you know that complaining to God because things are going so horrible, failing to recognize that it's actually the attack of Satan against you, against your home, against your family, against your job, and they can manifest in many ways. But the warfare is spiritual warfare. And for the spiritual warfare, I want to let you know it takes spiritual weapons. And God has provided us with those spiritual weapons. As in Ephesians chapter 6, Paul says, Therefore recognizing that we are wrestling against the spiritual forces and powers. So he began to tell us, put on the whole arm of God that she might be able to withstand the works of the evil one, that she might be able to stand against them all. Put on the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, the shield of faith wherein we quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. And then having armed you completely. Then conclude by saying Philippians 4 and 6. Praying with supplication and in the spirit. Let your requests be known unto God. So the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. The weapons of our spiritual warfare are spiritual weapons. The word of God, faith, and prayer. And by these we come against the attack of the enemy. By these we can defeat the enemy. You now have authority and power through Jesus Christ to put the enemy to a flight. In other words, put him on the run. And when you come against him in the victory of Christ that was war at Calvary, Satan must yield. Now, the area of the battlefield is the imagination of man and in his thoughts. Satan battles you in your mind. The spiritual battle a wage in your mind. That's where Satan challenges God. Has God said? Does God know? Is the knowledge in the most high? Does God see? And quite often we are deceived by Satan thinking that we are getting by and thinking that God just doesn't see us. But in our minds, Satan will plant thoughts 
ideals and fantasy. What do I do with them? See yourself in a position of authority. See, and seldom you will find yourself caught up which you really thought I would never do. But you see, you first of all did it in your mind. That's what Jesus was talking about when he said, you have heard that it has been said, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, whosoever lusts at the woman in his heart, Matthew 5, 28. You see, there is where it starts. It starts in the mind, in the fantasizing. You are already guilty. You're on the road, you're on the way, you're already in your mind done the Ike. And so that's where it has to be checked. Pulling it down. That's where we need spiritual weapons to check those imagination and casting down every imagination, anything that would exalt itself against the law of God that will put me in opposition to what God has said, bringing every thought into captivity unto the obedience of Jesus Christ. If that thought you had doesn't measure up and match what God would have said for you to do or be, then get rid of it. Don't play with it. Don't flirt with it. Because it can bring you into damnation. Pull it down. Let us pray. Eternal Heavenly Father, we come to you acknowledging you, God, that every stronghold that's in our mind, we're casting it down, God. And we'll believe in God that you've got all power. And we're standing and believing, identified. We're going to recognize, resist, and rejoice over the victory that you have given us over the enemy. Pull it down.